We're at the home of Everything Frederick, and I'm with Karen Adma from Karen Adma Consulting. Welcome. Thank you very much. So you're a grant writer. I am. For those of you that don't know, nonprofits utilize applying for grants to keep doing what they're doing, right? Yeah. Grant funding is essential for nonprofits to be able to provide all of their programming and services. And you are a winner of a Shiro Award which happens on the Thursday evening. I think that event is at Union yeah. Mills. The fact that you help these nonprofits, especially those either helping people that disadvantaged in some way, shape or form, or uh, the actual nonprofits themselves are based on people uh, that, you know, who need that additional leg up, you're helping them get that money and continue. Absolutely. The resources to work with the people who are the most vulnerable in our communities yeah. is essential. Yeah. And actually, I met Karen through helping Boys and Girls Club. Yes. You are helping them with some grants, too. So do you find grants or you just are pointed where an organization will say, hey, we want to apply for this grant. Can you help? I mean, a bit of both, really. Yeah. Um, I find that a lot of executive directors already have people who are funneling them opportunities because they're already in the nonprofit space and mm. are talking to people, are figuring out what funding is coming up. But then there are also those projects that are a little bit niche or just need more research done about what funding is out there. And so I am able to provide that research as well if organizations need it. Holy cow. Yeah. I mean, that, that in and of itself is a humongous help. I know I've been on some nonprofit boards. Uh, the one thing everybody needs is a good grant writer because there are things that are asked for in a grant, as you know, that if you don't do it correctly, you're not going to yeah. get the money. Yeah. So <laughs> it's true. It can be really overwhelming to write a grant or even just to look through the grant guidelines and stipulations and everything that's required. Yeah. And sometimes executive directors or whoever is on staff just doesn't have the knowledge, the expertise, or even just the time. Yeah. It takes a lot of time to comb yeah, through and do. even just like find out if you're eligible for a grant. Right, right. Right, that's the very first step. And yeah. sometimes even that is kind of tricky. Previous to coming to, how long have you been in Frederick? I've been in Frederick for 10 years. Okay, mm -hmm. a decade now. We'll, we'll accept you as one of our <laughs> own now. Thank you. What were you doing before you started your own company? I was working for a local nonprofit that is regional. It was called Transform Mid-Atlantic. They were located on Hood's campus several years ago. They were doing civic engagement and service learning in higher education. Okay, okay. And so I applied for and managed their AmeriCorps VISTA grant. Um, which is a large federal grant that's basically a domestic Peace Corps program. Right, yes. I remember yeah. hearing about that. So the there Americorps, were campus yeah. community projects. Yeah. And so I would apply to the federal government for that grant and then have um, campuses or higher education institutions apply to me for a position mm. um, for a campus community project. And so that gave me a real 360 degree yeah. <laughs> view of, of grants and what was successful and the reporting side of things. So yeah. it was very comprehensive education. Yes, <laughs> yes. And how long were you doing that? A number of years. Okay. I started in 2015 okay. and started my own thing in 2021. Okay. Very yeah. good. Excellent. What are one or two things that you can share with nonprofits, like the top things when either applying to or looking for a grant that they can do to help kind of maybe get noticed? Or is there any piece of advice that you can offer to a nonprofit at all? It's kind of about balance, I think, because you don't want, you want to be realistic in your expectations of like what your organization has the capacity to manage in terms of grants because larger pots of money come with larger reporting requirements often. Mm. Um, and so it is often about balance, trying to figure out how to build that capacity. Um, and I often think of it as kind of like a stepladder or a staircase of getting those initial 
um, foundation grants that you might be able to like talk to the funder right um, and have that relationship to get feedback to start kind of your grant education of yeah. how to do it and do it well. Yeah. And then you kind of expand to a larger, maybe regional or national foundation and then state money and then potentially federal money. And that yeah. all, you know, you have to kind of build up to yeah. the biggest pots of money. Yeah. So your company, are you, are you simply the help with the grant writing itself that once the money goes, you don't have any input or management over that at all? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I write the grant. I do a like comprehensive, thorough grant application. Um, I'll help with submitting, um, like just getting it to the finish line. Yeah. And then yeah. it's kind of out of my hands yeah. after that. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's very cool. So as I said, there's a ton of nonprofits here in Frederick who would need your services, I'm sure. Yes. Um, what, how many grant writers are there in Frederick? Do you know? I don't. Oh. There's a few of us. Okay. Um, I there's like 1,500 nonprofits in Frederick. There are many, many <laughs> nonprofits. Yes, correct. Yeah. I yeah. don't know how many grant writers. Yeah, and I think I'm you might be only don't. like one of two that I know of, but I, I guess I haven't done my I research. I think there are a that. handful, but handful. I, I don't know everyone yeah. either. Yeah, that's interesting. You guys don't have like a little basement kind of place where you all get no, together and should, right? complain about yes. no, no, all the work that has to be done. How long does it take to write a grant typically? Do you have that depends on the funding yeah. source. Again, like yeah. a smaller foundation. Um, and it also depends on how long I've been working with an organization. Okay, because so how much you already know mm -hmm. versus how much you have to learn to, to exactly, do that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So the first grant application with a new organization that I'm working with is often the like a bit of a heavier lift because I'm learning about the organization, the programs that they have, yeah. the services they provide. Um, yeah. Even just how they talk about themselves yeah. in their own marketing um, and materials. Um, what can an organization do to make your job easier when they decide to contact you? What can they already have in place to kind of ease that heavy lift the first time around? Yeah, if they've ever applied to any other grants prior to engaging my services, I will ask for those applications. Okay, I so want all of the information. Um, or we'll sit down and do a meeting and go through like, what are the services or programs that you have? Um, and yeah. they're kind of their funding model too. Of right. like, Cause sometimes you have to create a, a project in order to apply for a grant. Right. And so you have to think about the work a little bit differently yeah. as a project. Then whereas you would, typically. normally you wouldn't think of it necessarily as a project. Yeah. When you're engaged with the client, are you in there with them on their property or are these is this information gathering done more by phone calls and meetings and that sort of thing? Yeah. Um, so both. I, yeah. I really enjoy working with local organizations so that yeah. we can have sit down face to face meetings um, or I can see their offices or centers or wherever they hold programming yeah um, that helps me tell their story better yeah I would imagine um, and but most of my work is remote yeah I'm, I work from home um, and a lot of it is by phone email text all that good stuff yeah yeah what's been the biggest challenge in doing this sort of business for you um I mean just running a business itself has been like a <laughs> steep learning curve for me. Um, I never thought that I would run my own business. Yeah. I've never felt like I had have been like a, an entrepreneurial person. <laughs> right. Um, so that has been really interesting and fun and challenging. Um, also, client relationships. I think everyone, everyone is different. Everyone operates in slightly different way. Um, executive directors have boards mm. who they need to report to and so all of those lines of communication are really helpful for me to learn and yeah. to figure out how the communication is going so that I can 
fill the piece that needs to be filled within their organization. What made you decide to actually start your own consulting firm for this? Some COVID burnout. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was working for a nonprofit who was asking that I uh, take on more for no bump in pay and yeah. on part-time hours and I had two small children at home and so there came a point where it was enough and I yeah. needed to do something different yeah yeah, yeah. and Fair I knew enough. that I was good at this I knew grants I can write um, and so I set off and, and it just made sense. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Do you have any goals you want to achieve this year? Have you kind of set any for yourself at all? Or you're just happy kind of as, as it comes in? Yeah. You know, take the work or not? Well, one of the things that I'm doing is uh, doing a little bit of marketing for myself, which mm -hmm. I have not done previously. Um, both kids are now in school full time, so mm -hmm. I have a little bit more capacity during the year. Um, so I am building a new website, actually talking to a marketing person, nice. um, potentially doing a rebrand uh, in the near future. So we'll see how that goes. That's all exciting yeah, stuff. It is. That's all it exciting is. stuff. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, I think again. Once word gets out, my friend, I think you'll be turning away more opportunity than you can even count because, I, as I said, I know there's a lot of nonprofits who need your service or guidance or help. You might have to do like a, like a, a webinar series or something to help people. I don't know. You I are not I, the first person yeah, to suggest yeah, yeah. doing so you something can reach, like that. So reach we'll a greater see. audience. Maybe just, you know, something they pay for that they get that your tips and... Yeah, and they have access yeah. to you maybe on just kind of a one question basis. I don't know. Sure, but anyway, sure. don't want to rewrite your whole business plan <laughs> right there. But this is Karen and she is being awarded a Shiro Award uh, coming up very soon during She Week from the Chamber of Commerce at Frederick. We congratulate you on everything you're doing and Thank wish you, you all so the much. best. Yeah. Thank you very much.